Show here today. I got. An, I have a uh, a lawyer. You know, a lawyer. When you're interested, when you have to interview a, a lawyer, you kind of have to bob and weave and make sure I get the right questions in there. Okay. But I like this to be an educational thing, and I think a lawyer is the one that. Uh, why do you need a lawyer? When do you get a lawyer? You know, I think that's important today, and you always need uh, some kind of legal help. So. In this corner, from uh, Montgomery County, my hearing aids are making a lot of noise. So, uh, tell me, tell them who you are, your name, everything else. Okay, go. My name is David A. Keatley Sr. I'm called Sr. because I have a son, David A. Keatley Jr. Talk up loud, got my hearing aids going. I'm a lawyer. I live in the Lansdale area. Lansdale. I've spent my whole career here in Montgomery County. I started out as a law clerk for the great judge, William T. Nicholas, who you may know. Um, I later went to work in the district attorney's office where I worked for six and a half years. Was I there then? You were there then. I was the county detective, yeah. As always, <laughs> you were the character of the office. We had a, we had a lot of good time. You know, I had a couple judges there, we, a couple we always DAs. knew when you were around. <laughs> and uh, after that, I was a magisterial district judge for 18 years, and since then I've been in You were district practice judge for a while. For 18 I'll years. around Lansdale. Lansdale and Montgomery Township. Yeah. You had my friend Ed Levine on the show in November. Yeah, and yeah. He, he gave me a couple shout-outs. Oh, so I think good. he's a, he recommended. He's it. got a better TV face than I do. Well, you're, 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 but he's a Republican or Democrat. You're both Democrats. We're both Democrats. Oh, okay. So we're going to talk about Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> Gasoline and matches. <laughs> nah, we get along fine. Yeah, that's right. So. Well, tell me something about you now. You grew up around uh, I grew up Montgomery in, County? grew up in Dresher, moved to Orland when I was in fourth grade. I went through the Upper Dublin High School system. Upper Dublin? Yeah. Uh, so I lived in Orland. Went, uh, you ever go to Cisco's Bar? Uh, get hoagies and then well, Flower Town? I, I don't think I want to admit that since I would have been <laughs> under 21 at the time. Place. All politicians and sports well, guys. I, I knew the guys. place well, but I, I'm going to deny that I ever went there under 21. <laughs> and then I went to Montgomery County Community College for two years. What did you take there? I took general studies. I got an associate uh -huh. in general studies. So I'd like to give a shout out to Montgomery County because it gave me a great starting point for my education. Yeah. Uh, from there, I went to Penn State, where I graduated from in 1980. That law? And, well, I studied political science. Oh, in, uh, oh, yeah. at Penn State. Well, you got a great background, right? And then I went to Duquesne University School of Law and graduated in 1984 and moved back to the yeah. area. So, I don't want to tell you how many degrees you got. I have one guy come in here and give me all the degrees. He, they call him Kid Thermometer. <laughs> got all the degrees. Well, I have just the right amount. I don't have too many. <laughs> I, I have enough. All right. You spent your career in the in the court system, right? I did. What what were some of the highlights that uh, were the sad and happy? Well, you had some had cases, sad cases, well, as, happy cases. As a prosecutor, that's usually not really a happy occasion because somebody no, usually did no. something wrong to hurt someone else. Of course, you're satisfied with a job well done when you successfully handle the case yeah, when I, you prosecute the case. But and you, you hear all the evidence, right? You hear it, and then you have to decide. Well, when I was a district judge, I would hear the evidence. Yeah, well, just, yeah we'll talk about that, a district judge. Now, you listen to all that, then you have to make a decision. That's right. You try to give everybody a fair opportunity to tell their side of the case. Uh, obviously, somebody's going to lose in almost every case. Yeah, But yeah. you want them to feel like they've been treated fairly. Yeah, you know, well, been given a, yeah. They've been given a shot in court. All right. When... Uh, so how long did, how long were your district judge? I was a district judge for 18 years. Wow. I uh, I went right from the district attorney's office to being district judge. And yeah. Who was that. who was the DA then? That was Mike Marino. Oh yeah. I'm sure uh, you know Mike Marino. Yeah, he was he was murder. <laughs> he was he was a uh, a great lawyer, one of my favorite oh, yeah. lawyers yeah, ever. Yeah. But but you better not make him mad. Uh, tell me, I know. Uh, he's also. But he's all right. He's a great great lawyer. I remember. When I was a policeman in Northtown, he was going to college, and he would send me one of that. He was doing a paper on uh, juvenile delinquency or something, you know. But uh, he was strict. He was a know, character, right? All right, now, how about 
Any outside jobs? Any do do anything on the side? Well, I had a great job for four years. I was a golf writer for the Reporter newspaper in Lansdale. What was it? A reporter? I was a, a golf writer. I wrote about golf for four years. A newspaper. A newspaper. No more there. No more. Was it no. still there? The paper's still there, but they merged with a, another uh, publishing group, and they eliminated yeah, all the yeah. jobs. So the like newspapers are all sort of, it's a shame. But I, I I've done know. some reporting for my radio station as well. I covered the uh, 2013 U.S. Open over here at Marriott. You still, you still do that? Occasionally, when there's yeah. a special event. And I also yeah. covered the uh, Democratic National Convention oh, this in 2016. So uh, I still get, get to do it a little bit, not as much as I would like, but I still yeah. get to do it a lot. Well, that job, politics really changed in Montgomery County. Everything used to be Republican, now it's all Democrat. Well, when I was uh, started as a law clerk, it was pretty much known that you had to be a registered Republican or you weren't going to get the job. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was a registered Republican. And then, uh, you know, about eight or ten years ago, things really started to turn. And now the Democrats win mo almost all the yeah. elections. Yeah, you you got to be Bob, really... Hey, Bob and Weave, you know. But, you know... Got the president, a, he's a Republican, and uh, it's still violent. <laughs> I don't know, he's still the president, you know. I, 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 have, I have to go with that. I'm very patriotic, you know, and I, well, I, I love I'm, this country. I'm Bobby. patriotic too, but that, you know, in my view, that means you want a president who treats people with respect and dignity. Well, you know, Other people don't see it that way, that's fair enough. All sunshine makes deserts. You have to have the rain and snow and have, if you want a beautiful garden. So that's what happened. He comes in for the hurricane and everything. So it'll all come out, you know, okay? Okay. Right? I hope so. I don't want no moosha moosha. I want a president doing these talks. I don't know. That's probably what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> all right, now, during your career as a judge, as a political man, you met some nice people, some uh, important people. I've Who met, are some of the people? With, tell me something about it. I've met some wonderful people. Um, when I was a golf writer, I met George H. W. Bush, who had oh, been yeah. the president of the, the United son? States. No, that was the dad. Oh, the dad. I met him. It was about ten days before his son was uh, up for election, and oh. I met him covering a golf tournament. Um, the next day after that, I met President Bill Clinton, also at the golf tournament. Yeah. And uh, the next day after that, I met Vice President Dan Quayle. So oh, it, Quayle. Was, it was called the. Whatever happened, he's just in the way. I don't know where he is. He don't get involved with anything. You know? uh, he wasn't that interesting. He no, wasn't he, anywhere near inter as yeah, interesting. He, he as, was a hug without a squeeze, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was nowhere near as interesting as President Bush or President Clinton. Yeah, yeah so. But uh, I guess uh, President Bush was a very interesting guy, you know. He was, what was he, a paratrooper? He used to jump he, out of airplanes. He was one of the first uh, pilots in World, he was one of the youngest pilots in World War II. Um, so he, you know, he was a, uh, a military man and then he went on to a great career in public service after yeah. that. So he, yeah. was, he was a delightful man, one of the highlights yeah. of my life meeting him the one day and then President Clinton the next day. Oh yeah, I met, I met, uh, met him and his wife, they came to Norristown. It was, uh, uh, there was a DeAngelis uh, uh, car uh, repair shop on East Main Street. And he came to visit him, and they were uh, patients in a hospital together. And he came, so it was like a Sunday morning, no, a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning. And uh, I get a call from the priest, Holy Savior. He says, Hank, he says, the president is down here at DeAngelis' garage. He says, get some guys down there and say hello to him. So we did. I would call a couple guys from the Catholic War vets that knew him, you know. I, 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 went, I called some older boys, you know. <laughs> I went down there and he, the, the president was in there talking to him. So we were across the street, the sec Secret Service guys were over here, they wouldn't let us get near the play whatever, while they were talking. So she came across the street, shake hands with us and all, you know. I didn't have no camera then, I had no young, know, but it was nice. She was very nice, you know. And uh, but I can say that he came, but we had quite a few presidents came to Norristown, but they don't come here no more. Well, when I came into the school this this morning, I saw the uh, the articles from when President Clinton visited here. Oh yeah, he was, very, he was here. The, the yeah, very building. President, vice president. No, he President yeah. Clinton yeah. was he was president but, at the time. Uh, I escorted when I was with the Norristown police. I escorted uh, Nixon. Picked him up at the, uh, the escort in Bridgeport, go over to Bridgeport Bridge, 
and the left on Lafayette Street, up to Cherry Street, right on Cherry Street, stop at the uh, Valley Forge Hotel, and he was going to talk right there at Main and Street Street. But I knew from what, you know, there wasn't that many people around there. You know, and then he had a big thing at Main and Street Street, a platform, and he spoke, you know, and the, his bus parked on, uh, on uh, Sweet Street between Main and Lafayette. And, uh, I, and he was running against Kennedy. So there was a little bit of difference. Well, that's when I had a, when I had a pickup, uh, Kennedy was uh, campaigning. He was campaigning in Chester, some country club or something. And uh, there all these cars parked on the, on the grass and it stopped raining and they all got stuck. So they were about three quarters of an hour late coming through. So when they come up the 4th Street in Bridgeport, I'm with the escort, and they told us, no sirens. They don't want no sirens or anything, you know. So, okay, you know. So next thing you know, there was uh, the mayor in Bridgeport, I don't think it was Brennan, I think his name was, Irish. He says, Kennedy's coming to my town. He says, he ain't going to just drive through. What do you think he did? He put a barricade there <laughs> so he could shake hands with him. So went through, went all the way around. We parked at the Valley Forge Hotel. Kennedy gets out with his uh, Secret Service and everything, and his hand was swollen from people shaking hands, and he had to put it in ice. He had to put ice there, you know. Yeah, so we were... That, so how many presidents yeah. have you met? What's that? How many presidents have you met? Oh, uh, that was... Uh, uh, Kennedy and uh, Nixon are the two that I escorted into the North End, but, yeah, but Kennedy went in there, Roosevelt Field was a big crowd waiting for us, so I could see the, the whole difference, you know, the people, you know. But uh, but then we went by the, the convent there where all the nuns were there, and I was all Catholic nuns, you know, so the Secret Service was going, come on, come on, go, you know, you know. You know? So I went real slow so the nuns could get a good picture. <laughs> now, come on, you talk a little bit, I'm doing all the talking now. Tell me. Yeah, it is a little bit to more about edgewise. You tell so you with with the the politics today. What's the scoop? What the scoop is is that um, I think people are very conscientious these days. Montgomery County is a wonderful place. People are smart. Right, they're educated. Right. They're conscientious. Um, I think they don't like you know President Trump's bluster. They don't like his insults. They don't like his dishonesty. And I think there's a real backlash. Um, there's right. the negatives that he brings. To our community, but don't overlook the positives. There's yeah. some great positives from all that. One of the greatest positives is that it's motivating all kinds of wonderful people to run for office that wouldn't have done so otherwise. Yeah. For example, in our area, there's a brilliant young lady named Sarah Johnson Rothman who's running for state representative now. Uh, last night, there was a candidate named Rachel Reddick who ran for Congress. I don't think she would have been motivated to run yeah. if not for this. So all kinds of people that weren't quite ready to pull the trigger yeah. into running yeah. for office have done so. Are people being more selective? Are they starting to look at the, uh, the candidates more today? I, well, I think they always have been, but now there's genuine competition from both parties, yeah. which I, can, I think can only benefit the community. I, it's not good when one party dominates to the exclusion of the other. A lot of, of people other. want to run. Or, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of very good people running. Yeah, yeah. And I think that can only benefit the community. Okay. We got a question from the audience, a lady there with the green hat. Uh, here, you read the question, what she said. We got a question up there. Out loud. What are your feelings about how politics have changed? Uh, my feelings about that are, um, you know, obviously this president was elected despite the fact that he insulted some of the finest people in the world, that he lies constantly. Um, but he's full of bluster and, you know, he makes a lot of promises that are ridiculous, but people well, have... Yeah, but he made his promise came through? Not at all. I don't well, think... <laughs> I don't see it that way. I mean, well, he said <laughs> he was going to build a wall. I'm not going to lock horns on that one. <laughs> well, that, uh, they can call all they want, but they still they need to tell me just exactly when Mexico is going to well, pay, pay for that wall. I'm a former police officer, and I'm saying he's 100% behind police and soldiers. I'm a veteran, too. Well, so the other the other I president did, the other I president did. was like bobbing and weaving. I you know, disagree I don't with know. that because he's attacked the I FBI didn't. and the Justice Department. Well, over there. I, <laughs> all right, we got another one here. This man with the, with the brown jacket over there in the balcony. Hey, here's another one. Talk Read about, it out loud, talk. Talk about my career experiences. Go ahead. Uh, well, like I told you, I went to work for the district attorney's office in 1987. Yeah, but the work. 
Uh, what, what was an interesting case? Well, I had a, a, a murder case uh, that I tried before a jury, which was very difficult because most of the evidence was from jailhouse snitches. Which case was that? The defendant's name was Ernest Preovolus. What is it? Ernest Preovolus. Oh, uh, is it the murder? It was a murder case out of Lower Moreland. Um, In Orland. Lower Moreland. Or Lower Moreland, yeah. And, uh, you know, the case went unsolved for a while, but then he started flapping his gums in jail. So there was another inmate who thought, well, wait a minute, this isn't right. This guy killed a young woman. I'm going to tell the police about it. So that's how the, ca the case got solved. Huh. Uh, you know, it was a tough case because y your main witness is a guy who had stolen 20-some cars and been right. in jail dozens of times. But he was, you know, he was a, told a, an honest story and the jury believed him. Yeah. So that was a, a real tough uh, a real tough battle. Well, when you were district attorney, did you sometimes get your, get some evidence from guys in jail that after they're in jail they start becoming stool pigeons? Oh yeah, that was the case I was just telling you about. Yeah, that, that's that. That's that. That remind me of. Of course, you got to be careful about it, but we yeah, were very careful. Because they can lie. Yeah, you 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 know that the defense is going to attack their story, so you know we were very careful about making sure we they were telling the truth. Because nobody, no prosecutor wants to have a witness who's yeah. who's lying on the stand. Well, you know, I've I've had cases in juvenile court and then uh, uh, in uh, other courts. And did you ever have a disturbance where something somebody didn't like the decision, got up on more than a uh, shirt, or somebody had to grab and run and well, something? I did. In fact, one time I was arraigning this young man who had been thrown out of a party, so his response was to come back and firebomb the party. He threw a Molotov cocktail at the party uh, and then drove off in his boss's truck when he was drunk. Uh, okay. Fortunately for the party, the bottle was a plastic Coke bottle, not a glass bottle, so it didn't break. Uh, but I set his bail at $100,000 and he ran off to try to escape. Well, I. This was a Saturday, so hardly anybody was around, just the police officer. This, 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 just, this was why I was district uh, judge, so, um, so I helped the cop to uh, subdue the guy. <laughs> and, you know, you see on Facebook people say, if you saw a cop in trouble, would you ever help, yeah. would you help him? And I was like, not only have I in the past, but I would in the future. So, uh, yeah, there was, there was a guy that uh, tried to escape, and uh, I was able to help the cop wrestle him down until more help got there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, by the next day, uh, <laughs> yeah. apparently the cops all over the county knew about it because... You better take a couple lessons in boxing, right? Pow, pow! Well, at my age, I think I'd rather just, like, put right, my weight now, on. Both of your children are lawyers? That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. And uh, it's almost what advice correct. would you give them, someone else considered being a lawyer? What, what do you think? I guess you start with education first. Well, We're in North Penn High School. Well, both my kids went to North Penn High School. They got great educations. I know. Okay, we, you say I want to become a lawyer, and later be a judge, maybe whatever. What should I start, you know, focusing on? I would say the number one most important thing to focus on is, is your writing skills. Writing. Writing. You got to be able to write. You got to be able to write clearly, and you got to be able to write persuasively. And it takes practice. It's, it takes work. It's like everything else. But, you know, most great lawyers are great writers, yeah. and a lot of great lawyers are great speakers. So yeah. work on your writing. Some and are specialized in certain, some are crime lawyers, some real estate, some, you know, wills and stuff like that. It all comes down to being able to write properly. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Not, I'm not talking about using too many big words. I'm talking about writing yeah. clearly and succinctly. Oh, well, where, where's your the sons? Where do, they, where do they practice? In Montgomery County? No, my son, Dave Jr., he's a, a deputy district attorney in Bucks County. In Bucks? In Bucks County, right across the border from where we live. And he's done a great job over there. Um, so. He's become a deputy district attorney. He's handled a lot of big cases. Oh. He's been there about five years. He's, right. How about the other one? My son Derek just graduated this past Friday from uh, Michigan State Law School. Where? Michigan State. Oh. <laughs> so uh, he has to study for the bar exam. He'll be taking that in July, and, and hopefully he passes. What do you think he'll work out of? Well, he's hoping to get a job from the, with the district attorney himself because he interned for them last year and he had oh. a great time doing it. Oh yeah, yeah, like a, an intern or something like that. Yeah. Both of my kids are good ball players too. Oh yeah. Yeah, my younger son was. Uh, I was told he was the best softball player in the league last year. Baseball. 
Uh, softball. Oh, softball, yeah. And uh, my older son's a pretty good softball player as well. Oh, I, I, <laughs> all right. So is there anything else you want to tell me about your sons? Well, how about the wife and everybody? Got other kids? Any other children? We're, well, we're all Penn Staters. I'll tell you that, that for one thing. I, What's that? We're, we're all Penn Staters. Oh, yeah. My oh. parents met at Penn State. I met my wife at Penn State. My older son, Dave, went to Penn State. His now wife went to Penn State. Yeah. Do you uh, go to the football games? I, every chance I had, I went to football <laughs> games. It's one of the great experiences. Yeah, I liked, I liked, I liked uh, the, the coach that they got rid of. But, uh, you know, I, I think that he did the right thing. He re reported it to the, to the security guys. Well, that, yeah. that's a whole subject. He, he, they told the police immediately. The police he, investigated he the, you very, know, immediate, very promptly. I don't know why they attacked him. He did what he had to do. Well, He's not a uh, prosecutor. You know, he he did what he was supposed to do. He told the, the oh, police were told immediately. Shame. They decided that there was nothing. But not little enough. by little, are going back. You know, I don't. Know what, I wonder where they put the statue. <laughs> well, a lot of us wonder where they put that statue, and we want it back where it was. Oh yeah, they're going to put it back. I hope so. They should. A yeah, lot of people are saying they're not going to. Shame. You know, he he donated a lot of money to the, to the well. To the, you know, the and, library uh, has his a name. Dedicated on. man, and you don't. I don't know. So we went out to the Rose Bowl last year. My son and my wife and I went out to the Rose Bowl down out in Pasadena. Oh, the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Wow. Which, you which watched a, the parade? <laughs> we watched the parade, watched the game. It was a tremendous experience. Oh. It was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, the weather was a lot like it is out here today, which was kind of uh, cool and rainy, but we still had a great time. So now you're you're the top guy in, in the Democratic Party in Montgomery County. No, not Montgomery County, Montgomery Township. Where are oh, your Montgomery township? Township. Oh, okay, okay. So and uh, we've done a really good job uh, recruiting pol uh, candidates and other committee people, and we've become pretty strong. We're a pretty good organization right now. Do you ever have it where you're you're a Democrat and the Republicans, and you think that the other guy in the Republican Party is more qualified than the guy you're backing? Sometimes happens, so you sort of have a, a bad taste. Yeah, that happens. It happens, yeah. It's it a happens. shame, you know. Some of my friends who are Republicans lost elections yeah. last year. Yeah, why? To, and I thought they were great people and great politicians, but, yeah. you know, the negative impact of Trump just drove so many Democrats out the vote that they weren't yeah. able to win. Well, you know, I had somebody running for something and he, he signed a bill or something that I didn't like. And, I, you know, I, that, that turns me off. You know, I, I have to look at it. I try to look and see. I, I'm a Republican, but I voted Democrat at different times, you know. Uh, I vote for the, for the person. You know, and I, I have my case here. I have Republicans, Democrats, everybody, you know. I let them go. Let them there's, flap there's, your wings. There's you a know? lot of wonderful people in both parties. You know, I like it. I like the Democratic Party. You know, I don't want where one guy, you know, I, one thing I was talking about politics, like in, uh, I'm going to be in, uh, interviewing two of the uh, commissioners, Val and Ken. Great people. Right. And uh, and then you got Joe Gale, the Republican. So that's good. Norristown has seven councilmen. They're all Democrat. Now, in under the circumstances, then six of them are not necessary because they all vote the same thing. Well, so necessary. I was saying, why don't they have? Four Democrats, three Republicans, three re Democrats, four. Break it up like like the Dinner County, and then you you have a little bit of a mix up. I actually like that idea. Huh? I like that idea. I, it should be because it works out well at the county level. Sure, it's why working out. Why wouldn't it work out? At I've the, had I've had Joe Go Gale here and uh, and Ken. They're, they both from the same township. They get along good, but when they get up there, they lock horns. You know, but it but it, it's it's good. <clears throat> I, I, I like that, you know, and uh, I, I know, what's the biggest notice that you notice a change in Montgomery County? What caused the change here that, that it was all, I remember it was a uh, park house, you know, he was uh, everything park house, and boom, boom, now it's a little change. What, what are some of the things that changed? Well, some of the people that came into the Democrat, Democratic Party were just so talented and so good yeah. that they brought a following and they had credibility because they were so talented. 
examples are Josh Shapiro, Valor Kush, Ken Lawrence, yeah. Leslie R Richards. These are really good people who ran for yes, county level yeah. office. I had him on the show. And uh, they won, and then they did a great job governing. So uh, once the Democrats were elected, which was unthinkable when I was a, a district yeah. attorney, uh, now that they win and they do a great job, it, it brings extra credibility. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is not to say there aren't uh, very fine Republicans yeah. out there, too, but the Democrats have done a very good job recruiting candidates. And yeah, then, more importantly, they don't, but I think the Republican Party, they were fighting among themselves, and I think that's what happened. Well, they did fight among themselves. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there was, uh, I, think I don't want to name some names, but a couple of them, they were locking horns, you know, and... Uh, you know, uh, I think sometimes, you know, we Democrats are tempted to fight among ourselves, but we try to we try to resolve it without it getting too, yeah. too nasty. Well, I think I think the county's running good. You know, I, I, I you know, I've been a police officer uh, when I was a county detective. I had to travel different states to pick up prisoners, and I got to see the, the you know, the, the prisons and different things. You know, so we we're in good shape. Oh, I think so. I think it's a, a, a very well-run county. Yeah. I'm, I'm very pleased with, uh, you know, our court system, the way that's run. Right. I'm pleased with our the, judges. the county government, right. the judges, the sheriff's department, the prothonotary's office, the court administrator's office. I think All right, here's another, another one from the balcony. Read it out loud. The one guy with the jacket up there. <laughs> yeah, give me the question <laughs> is, what is the biggest issue facing the Democratic Party? Well, wait, repeat that again. The biggest issue facing the Democratic Party. All right, what's the issues? I would say that, um, you know, we've, we all pretty much disapprove of President Trump because, you know, he, he's so dishonest and, he, and he's, <laughs> and he, you know, he insults people all the time and all those kind of things. But we've got to come up with our own unifying message. We can't. I just, like him. I like him. Trump, you know, I, well, I was a, do. I was assistant trainer for Mike Grant was fighting at Galata at the Taj Baha, and he was wrapping his hands ready for the championship fight. The knock on the door, who comes walking in, was uh, Trump, and he shook hands, you know. And uh, by the way, do you know Judge Rubenstein from Bucks uh, County? No, he's a fight fan. He likes uh, show business. So, Judge Rubenstein I, used to be a boxer. All right, I, here's the big question. Who is going to be running against Trump for president? Well, if I knew that, I would tell you, but I have a couple guesses. Who do you think? I really like Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey. He's Who? Or the guy who just Corey got Booker. elected there? No, I don't think so. I think oh, the, oh, the guy just got elected governor? No, no, no. Senator Cory Booker is one. Senator Kamala Harris from California is another oh. one. Representative Adam Schiff from California is another possibility. Yeah. So, you know, well, it's, it's a couple years away. But we've got to come up with our own message. We can't just complain yeah, about that, Trump. If Hillary Everts runs against, if she runs unopposed, she'll lose. Well, I don't think she's <laughs> going to run again. She's, you know, right. she did a good, she ran hard and she wasn't able to beat Trump. So oh, I think. yeah. I, I don't know. She's, she's causing more problems for the, for the party, well, I think. I, I don't know. I liked her, but I understand yeah, that a lot yeah. of people didn't. She's polluting the water. So every time she gives a speech, you know, you, you know I'm, a, I'm a fight Referee, I made a decision. I stopped the fight. You know that guy, or I phoned it for this guy. You know, and people complain. Come on. Did you All know? Right. Uh, do you know another fight judge named Alan Rubenstein? Who? Alan Rubenstein. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a judge up in uh, Bucks County. Bucks County. Yeah. Good guy. All right. Got 30 seconds. Hit it. Well, you know, Ed Levine was here on your birthday. Today's my 60th birthday. So. Oh yeah. Thanks to everybody who's acknowledged that, my sisters, my wife, my kids, oh. everybody. So today I'm, I'm, I'm 60. So. David, thank you. And let's have a little toast here to you and then to uh, the, it's the my, Democratic It's my pleasure to be with the government. Legend, legend of McGraw. The Democratic, County. right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for allowing us to come in there. And, and I hope that you fix up something good here. But whatever the most important thing you do, we talk about by vote. That's the most important thing. So God bless you and keep bobbing and weaving, left hand high, stick and move, and keep your trunks off the canvas. And my guest, grazie, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs>